Hi everyone, welcome to another video. Today we're gonna be. I'm sorry I haven't uploaded in a while, it's just that, like, I was getting used to middle school. But anyway, so. Today I'm gonna be showing you guys this game that I'm coding. So. Yeah, it's purely in Java, there's absolutely no libraries involved. Unless you count, like, the JRE and stuff, so. Yeah, I did code, like, a security thing so that I can encrypt data and decrypt it again. So I did code that, but that's the only thing that I use, other than this file thing. And, okay, anyway, so I've made a few things for it. So I've made a launcher, and I'm working on a level creator. So, sorry about that. So I have a launcher, and I have uh, the game itself. And yeah, so this took a lot of work, so let's get right into it. So, I've opened up this thing here. So this is the game directory, it has like all the resources and stuff. It has the fonts, it has the versions, it has like the properties, and it has like a readme.txt that I'm going to change. But anyway, so I have a launcher.jar file, so this is basically like you know, inside of Minecraft, there's like a... I should probably show you, so... Sorry if I'm veering off topic. I tend to do that a lot. So inside of Minecraft, there used to be like a launcher.jar file. If you double-click that, then Minecraft would start. So that's what I'm going to have in my game. So here's the launcher.jar file. So I'm going to double-click it. And as you can see, it says launcher 0.0.1. has a really... Let's just say interesting looking splash screen. It can't. I, I guess I can select the version. I can select it, and it requires for a username and a password. So right now, I've made myself an account. I'll show you that later. But so I made myself an account, and it, it says what version I'm playing. So there's a play button. So as you can see, there's a window titled game now. It says play and quit. So I'm pretty sure you can guess what the quit button does. So let's hit play. So I'm gonna hit play. And as you can see, I'm trapped in this house looking thing. I guess. So I'm trapped in a house with a few zombies chasing after me. I guess I have a bow and in my backpack I have a few arrows. And whatever that is. So anyway, so these are the zombies inside of it. So that was a glitch right there that I'm trying to fix, like that. But anyway, so I can shoot the zombies with my arrow and stuff, so let me try to separate them. I killed one zombie, so I'm gonna kill the other zombie. Because they were interfering with my plans. Mwahahahahaha. <laughs> that wasn't evil at all. So, as you can see, I can hit the B key on my keyboard. <coughs> To open up a backpack, so this is a backpack. It has an 8x8 in Minecraft inventory like thing that I can like move stuff around. It has pretty good like user uh, user interface. As in, I can like drag stuff around and I can move stuff and swap items. So yeah, and a cute little feature that I added is that whichever item I'm holding. It's going to display right, I mean, to the left of the player. So let's say I'm holding this, then it's going to hold my electro ball. If I move it out, then it's not going to hold anything. So anyway, I can shoot arrows. As you can see, arrows travel through walls. And arrows, they also rotate to face whichever direction it is to the mouse cursor. So for example, let's say I'm facing right here. This would be zero degrees, I believe. So it's not going to rotate at all. For example, this would be 270 degrees, so it is going to rotate that way. And using a bit of trickery, I managed to also make it so that instead of going off of the, the, what do I need to say? Yeah, instead of going off the cursor's position, I translated it into world coordinates. So let's say I'm doing it. I'm pointing at that block, so that block is 17 and 5, 
then it's actually then the arrows are actually gonna hit that block, not just yeah, not just by the coordinates 17 and 5 on my screen, because that would be quite terrible. Anyway, so it does have a very Minecraft looking appearance, but I just want to say, say that I don't mean for it to be that way, because it's quite hard actually coding something else without like, with like circles and stuff, I guess. So yeah, here's my 200 Electro Balls, so I'm going to swap those out with my bow. So, I ha I'm holding Electro Balls, and to use them, what I need to do is left click and it will trigger the item event so it's going to trigger it and as you can see the electro balls bounce around it's actually quite cool so they can bounce around in the room and they can like remove all monsters I guess. and then i can do this sorry about that as you can see they sometimes do like go into walls that's still a bug that i'm trying to fix but uh, they bounce really well. I'm proud of myself for doing this. And yeah. So it looks really cool. There's like 10 Electro Balls following each other. They'll show you in a second. So, like that. There's a bunch of Electro Balls following them right here. So that's because I first had a system where like it generated a random thing and it bounced off in a random direction. And I also had like an offset where it. But I feel that I'm getting too technical here. I'll just leave it to that. But yeah, so there's tile, there's collision tiles. There's bricks and sand and stone, although I haven't added them yet. There's flowers and grass. There's chat, which I can access by the T key. So I push the T key and then I can start typing. After I type something, I hit enter. I haven't made it do anything yet about that, so that's another thing which I keep on adding. As you can see, I'm not, I don't plan to make this like a short term stop thingy. I'm just gonna keep on adding more and more stuff until it becomes too complicated and I stop it. So, yeah, guys, I can, yeah. So there's a gradient from, there's a gradient from the middle of the screen to that edge of the screen. So it just becomes more and more, the alpha transparency increases, so that's why I did that. So I also made this advanced rendering method, so it only renders what the player can see. So yeah, anyway guys, so yeah, if you have any ideas for my game, just leave it down in the description. But that's not all to this video, ha ha ha. This is my login file, so as you can see, there's one zero five three five one six two one nine one one three seven five and so on a long string of incomprehensible numbers which somehow my game can decode so yeah that's about it Ex wait never mind sorry so as you can see so i have this launcher sorry about that so now i'm going to show you my login stuff more login stuff, I guess. So, as a username, let's say I try to hack into it. So, I hit an H A K E R, no, see, H A X E R, four four two three one zero, I mean, one nine five six. Okay, let's say I try to enter that. That was random. And now, let's say I try to enter the password, which is A B C one two three four five D E F. Let's say I type that in. And then I, I guess I'll just leave the version the same. And this thing is welcoming me, so I'll fix that. As you can see, it's going to say login error. Sorry, invalid login credentials. And that's because that thing I showed you on Vine, it doesn't have those words in it. So once I hit that, my properties get saved into here. So ABC1234 DEF, and you get it in that. It also saves the version, so I don't have to change it every time. So it just reloads these in, and that's quite useful. I'm just going to re-log in with my normal stuff, so... There we go, and hit play, and it will work. So I'm planning on adding like a lot more stuff to this menu, maybe like an options bar, 
where I can change graphic settings and such. But yeah, so for now that's all I have in my game. If you guys have any ideas, if you want to say something, if you don't like it, if you do like it, any opinions, just put them in the comments and I'll try to get back as soon as I can. So yeah. And see you guys later in my next video. So thanks for watching and goodbye.